Ever since ISIS burned Jordanian pilot Mu'adh al-Qasaba to death, we've been reminded again and again by politicians, the media, and Muslim organizations that burning people to death is un-Islamic, and that ISIS, therefore, is un-Islamic. You may have noticed that the pundits who keep insisting that Islam forbids killing by fire won't actually quote the passage for us. They won't even give the reference. Why is that? Wouldn't it be nice to have a clear command from Allah or Muhammad handy so that we can throw it in the faces of extremists and discredit them in the eyes of Muslims around the world? Why not quote the passage for us? The reason Islam's Western defenders won't show us where Islam condemns putting people to death by fire is that the passage in question contains Muhammad's standing orders to execute apostates, and it specifically says that apostates were burned to death by none other than Ali ibn Abi Talib, Muhammad's cousin and son-in-law and the fourth rightly guided caliph of Islam. It's a passage that promotes the very crimes our leaders have been assuring us have no place in Islam, so no one's going to quote it to you. Except me. Sahih al-Bukhari, 6922. Some Zanautica, atheists, sort of, who had left Islam, were brought to Ali, and he burnt them. The news of this event reached Ibn Abbas, who said, If I had been in his place, I would not have burnt them, as Allah's apostle forbade it, saying, Do not punish anybody with Allah's punishment, fire. I would have killed them according to the statement of Allah's apostle, Whoever changed his Islamic religion, then kill him. What does Ibn Abbas mean when he says that he would have killed them according to the statement of Muhammad, Whoever changed his Islamic religion, kill him. He's referring to beheading, as we read in Malik's Muwatta. The Messenger of Allah said, If someone changes his religion, then strike off his head. So the passage that tells Muslims not to kill apostates by burning them to death commands Muslims to kill apostates by chopping their heads off. Since it would be counterproductive to condemn ISIS by quoting a hadith that promotes the beheadings everyone's been using to condemn ISIS, the media do what they do best and give us a partial truth, the tiny part they want us to hear and not the part that proves what despicable liars they are. But the burning of apostates by Ali raises an obvious question. If Muhammad's followers knew that he said, do not punish anybody with Allah's punishment, why was the fourth rightly guided caliph, Muhammad's own son-in-law, the man who certainly wasn't ignorant of Muhammad's commands, burning apostates? One of the reasons is that Muslims are also commanded to follow Muhammad's example, and Muhammad was all too happy to punish people with fire. For instance, Muhammad had his followers torture a man named Kanana by lighting a fire on his chest. The apostle gave orders to Az-Zubair ibn al-Awam, torture him until you extract what he has. So he kindled a fire with flint and steel on his chest until he was nearly dead. Then the apostle delivered him to Muhammad ibn Maslama, and he struck off his head in revenge for his brother Mahmud. So according to Muhammad, it's perfectly acceptable to torture a man with fire, even though Allah is the one who punishes with fire. What about executing someone? Sahih al-Bukhari, 657. The Prophet said, No Salat, prayer, is more heavy for the hypocrites than the Fajr and the Isha prayers, and if they knew the reward for these Salat at their respective times, they would certainly present themselves in the mosques, even if they had to crawl. The Prophet added, Certainly I intended, or planned, or was about to order the Mu'adhin to pronounce Iqamah, and order a man to lead the Salat and then take a fire flame to burn all those men along with their houses who had not yet left their houses for the Salat in the mosques. Why did Muhammad want to burn people to death in their houses for missing prayers? Because missing prayers was a way to identify hypocrites. Can you think of any other Muslims who kill people they regard as hypocrites? I sure can. But there's a much more straightforward reason for ISIS to execute a man by fire. The leaders of the Islamic State have modeled their approach after the apostate wars of Abu Bakr, Muhammad's father-in-law and closest companion, and the first of the rightly guided caliphs. When Muhammad died, many people left Islam or refused to submit to the central Islamic authority. Abu Bakr sent them a letter and an army. In the letter he said, 
I have sent to you someone at the head of an army. I ordered him not to fight anyone or to kill anyone until he has called him to the cause of God, so that those who respond to him and acknowledge him and renounce unbelief and do good works, my envoy shall accept him and help him to do right. But I have ordered him to fight those who deny him for that reason, so he will not spare any one of them he can gain mastery over, but may burn them with fire, slaughter them by any means, and take women and children captive, nor shall he accept from anyone anything except Islam. Even professing Muslims who rebelled against Abu Bakr could be burned to death. For instance, a man named al fuja who claimed to be a Muslim but was attacking the Islamic State, was brought to Abu Bakr by Turefa. Here's what happened. When the two of them approached Abu Bakr, he ordered Turefa ibn Hajiz to take him out to this clearing and burn him in it with fire. So Turefa took him out to the prayer yard and kindled a fire for him and threw him into it. Now, you may be thinking, who cares what Abu Bakr did? And the answer is, Muslims do. Because when Muhammad was dying, he said to his followers in Sunan ibn Majah 43, I am leaving you upon a path of brightness whose night is like its day. No one will deviate it from it after I am gone, but one who is doomed. Whoever among you lives will see great conflict. I urge you to adhere to what you know of my sunnah and the path of the rightly guided caliphs and cling stubbornly to it. So here's the quandary that Muslims face. In Surah 4, verse 65 of the Quran, Allah commands Muslims to unquestioningly obey Muhammad's decisions. But Muhammad commands Muslims to obey the rightly guided caliphs, and the first of the rightly guided caliphs commands Muslims to burn people to death. By the time we get to the fourth rightly guided caliph, Muslims are still burning people to death. That's when Ibn Abbas suddenly remembers that Muslims aren't supposed to burn people to death, they're supposed to chop off heads. Is it wrong from an Islamic perspective to burn people to death? If it's wrong, then Muslims shouldn't follow the path of the rightly guided caliph, Abu Bakr. But Muhammad said to follow the path of the rightly guided caliphs. So as a Muslim, which command are you supposed to obey? Should you obey Muhammad's command not to punish people with fire, or Muhammad's command to follow the rightly guided caliphs who burned people to death? Given such contradictory commands, why would we be surprised that some Muslims are burning people to death while others are condemning them for it? Or that Muslims are accusing each other of being hypocrites or apostates and chopping off each other's heads, or that Muslims are blowing up each other's mosques. Incoherent nonsense is one thing. Violent incoherent nonsense is lethal. Now, to be on the safe side, if you're a Muslim, you shouldn't burn people to death, in case Ibn Abbas was right. Better to err on the side of caution. But if you're one of the Muslims calling for ISIS to be punished, think about this. What was the penalty for punishing someone with fire? How was Muhammad punished for torturing a man with fire? What happened to Abu Bakr when he had Muslims burn people to death? What sort of judgment did Ali face for burning apostates? The only punishment for any of them was that Ibn Abbas said, well, I wouldn't have done it that way. I would have chopped off some heads. So the message of Islam is don't burn people to death. But if you do,